It's 10 o'clock. You're watching KMGH TV. Live from Denver, this is Colorado 7 News with Lynn Setzer, Kurt Sandoval on sports, and meteorologist Cliff Morrison with your first forecast. Colorado 7 News starts now. Major developments today in the worst terrorist attack in U.S. history, the bombing of the Alfred Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Good evening, I'm Lynn Setzer. First, the latest on two men being held as material witnesses. Tonight, a federal judge in Oklahoma issued a material witness warrant for Terry Nichols. Earlier today, he faced a federal judge in Wichita, Kansas, who won't act on the case until Thursday. Police say he and his brother James, who live in Michigan, knew the primary suspect in the bombing. That suspect, 26-year-old Timothy McVeigh, is still behind bars tonight, but the investigation surrounding him is bringing authorities west. Police describe McVeigh as a right-wing extremist, angry with the government for the raid on the cult compound in Waco. He was arrested hours after the bombing when he was pulled over for driving a car without license plates. Agents are converging on Kingman, Arizona in their pursuit of evidence. That's where McVeigh recently listed an address. And that's where the suspects may have practiced bomb making. Local police investigated a mysterious explosion outside the city two months ago and found traces of ammonium nitrate. That chemical and fuel oil are the principal ingredients used to blow up that federal building in Oklahoma City. And police are still looking for a second suspect. The FBI is calling this man John Doe number two. He remains unidentified and at large tonight. Meanwhile, the search for survivors continues after the explosion. The death toll now stands at 78. 150 people are missing and 200 are recovering from injuries. Hope has all but fated that rescuers will find anyone else alive inside the building. On top of that, the weather today has been anything but helpful for rescuers. Pat Witter joins us live from downtown Oklahoma City with more. Pat? Yeah, when you say the weather has been anything but helpful, it is, it is miserable down here. It is uh, wet. It is also starting to turn very cold. And to the people, uh, the rescuers inside the building, it's made a very difficult job that much worse. It's stressful going on the guys that are working in there. It is one of the most difficult jobs imaginable. You know, they're dealing with, with a lot of things, you know, with the, with the bodies and, and the body recovery and digging through the, uh, the rubble. At times, the searchers must quit because of the weather, but there are others who continue in their own way. <laughs> with each bag, food, clothing, blankets, <laughs> each box, hard hats, gloves, goggles, Oklahomans fight back. It feels really good. I mean, there's so many people here that need the help right now, and I just feel like it's something that I can do to help. I mean, it, it just felt good. I couldn't hardly sleep last night. I was so excited about coming down here to deliver everything. It was, it was, it was a good feeling. I'm wet. I'm very wet, but that's okay. These people need me, so I'm here. And even on a day like this, no one wants to call it quits. If it was hailing out here, if it was snowing, we'd still be here. Anything we can do. Lynn, one of the biggest problems today was uh, the threat of lightning. There was a lot of lightning around the Oklahoma City area today with all of the construction equipment, the heavy uh, the cranes uh, working on the building. They were afraid that lightning could hit one of those endangering the workers inside. Uh, we're told that's not going to be as much of a threat tomorrow. The weather's not supposed to be much better, but that's one thing they probably won't have to worry about. Back to you. Are, are they searching tonight? Are they continuing to search through the night? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure at this time. Uh, I think they are in there. We have not had the kind of lightning that we had earlier today, and that was one of the main things that they were worried about. So uh, it's quite possible they are in there searching right now. Okay, thanks, Pat. All right. Tomorrow is a national day of mourning for the people who died in Oklahoma City. President Clinton used his weekly radio address to reach out to children today. The president and first lady tried to reassure them that America is still a safe place to live and that there are more good people in the world than evil. The first couple will travel to Oklahoma tomorrow to attend memorial services. Oh, 
And in Denver tonight, members of a local church hold a candlelight service for the bombing victims. They braved the chilly weather to sing and pray for those who died. Also in Denver tomorrow, services to remember the bombing victims. An interfaith memorial is scheduled for 4 o'clock at St. John's Episcopal Cathedral in Denver. A night of celebration ends tragically for a group of teenagers in Adams County this weekend. Two teens were killed on their way home from a prom when their car slammed into a power pole. The accident happened near 88th and Holly. The four teens were all seniors at Brighton High School. Two were killed, two injured. They were on their way home to change clothes after the prom. A witness described what happened. And they were going really, really fast at a very high speed. It looked almost as if somebody was chasing them. And then the rear end swung out like they were trying to make a very quick right-hand turn. And they crashed into the power line. And all I saw was sparks from the power lines. And I heard this screech and a big thud. And uh, then the lights went out. So I knew exactly what had happened because it's happened before. Investigators say three of the victims were thrown from the car, and police say the teens may have been drinking. David Spears and Jeff Teeter were both injured. Rebecca Harden and Aaron Maximkow both died. In other news around Colorado tonight, the University of Colorado could be changing its policy on sexual harassment. Regent Guy Kelly says the school needs to look at its current policy and possibly change it. Right now, professors are prohibited from having sex with their students, but says nothing about sexual relations with students in other fields of study. Kelly says the issue should be looked at, but others on campus say the issue is bound to be controversial. There's a chill in the air tonight reminding us that winter isn't through with Colorado just yet. Time now for your first forecast with Cliff Morrison. Thanks, Lennon. Hello, everyone. Where is spring? Well, it's not going to be around the area tomorrow. We're still looking for below normal temperatures, and we have icy conditions in the high country. I want to tell you right off the top, I-70 is closed in both directions of Vail Pass because of icy conditions. They'll be expecting some snow up there as well. Right now, it's 34 degrees in Denver. The overnight low should be 29. Patchy fog toward the morning, and tomorrow in the afternoon, we should see some rain, perhaps changing to snow. 30 degrees at 7 o'clock in the morning. High tomorrow, about 45. At noon, it'll be 44. And at 7 o'clock at night, 38 degrees. Snow in the high country, and perhaps some of this rain changing to snow in the afternoon here in the Denver area. Next week, milder weather. We'll check on that. I have a high temperature of some 50s and 60s later on, which is a little bit better than what we've had this last couple of days. That's the first forecast. You can say that again. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. There's more news ahead tonight. A popular airline that flies out of Denver is being grounded. And passengers are left holding the bags with plenty of frustration. Details in our Target 7 report. Also ahead, this couple is feeling mighty lucky after the stork delivers a big bundle. And if you're feeling lucky tonight, we have your Colorado Lotto numbers in just a minute and a half. And I'm Kurt Sandoval in the Colorado 7 Sports Office. Where did the Nuggets stand in terms of making the playoffs? We will paint that picture for you in sports. And today's NFL Draft certainly had a Colorado connection. All the details in sports. And here are tonight's winning lotto numbers. They are 5, 7, 18, 19, 20, and 35, worth $1.5 million. Colorado 7 News continues in one minute. An airline at DIA is in financial trouble. Mark Air is already in Chapter 11 bankruptcy and now faces the possible repossession of most of its jets. In tonight's Target 7 report, Paul Reinertsen joins us live from our newsroom to explain what that means to customers. Paul? Lynn, starting Monday, Mark Air will halt all service to and from Alaska. And they're also halting their Denver-Reno-Oakland route. And that will likely be just the beginning. All customers will be angry but none more than those from Alaska who believed in what they called their airline. How many are in party? Seven. Watching a full plane unload, it's hard to believe Mark Air is in trouble. But the people you see here are on the next to last flight to Denver from Alaska. You know, too bad, so sad, see you later. In Alaska, every resident gets an annual dividend check from oil and gas revenue. 
and they're encouraged to spend it with local businesses, including Mark Air. They would give you four round trip tickets anywhere they flew domestically for your dividend check. But starting Monday, Mark Air won't be flying from Alaska to the lower 48 states. I was trying to support local, you know, economy in Alaska, and now they're pretty much worthless, I think. Greg Nelson had talked his friend Ron into going with him up to Alaska in May. North Peak of Denali, that uh, this would be one of the only ways I could probably ever afford to do it. Alaskan families were investing up to $20,000 in Mark Air tickets for summer vacations and other trips. Thought we'd have a nice Christmas together with our family. Not only is Mark Air refusing to give refunds, so far other airlines are not honoring their tickets. 650 bucks one way to LaGuardia from Denver and they will not honor anything Mark Air. More than anything, these Alaskans have their feelings hurt. Uh, isn't it an Alaskan airline? Guess not anymore, huh? And those here in Denver today are worried about getting stranded on the next leg of this trip. I think this plane will go there, but we pray, we hope. <laughs> Thank you. And Lynn, on Monday, airplane leasing companies will be talking to the bankruptcy court in Alaska. And if they get their way and take their planes back, Mark Air will be down to just four jets. The normal advice at this point would be to tell you to call your travel agent if you're holding a Mark Air ticket. But the agents are telling us they're totally in the dark. It may be a little too late for buyer beware. Sounds like it's too late for the ones who already have tickets. That's correct. Okay, thanks, Paul. Coming up, some other high-flying travelers are taking off, and they're landing on top of the world, literally. We'll also show you how Denver is celebrating Earth Day 95. But next, details of a plan to stop a terrorist attack at Disneyland. Stay with us. This week's tragedy in Oklahoma City has the world on alert about terrorism. Now the Justice Department says it appears to be a hoax, but it has launched a criminal investigation into a threat aimed at one of America's favorite places. More in tonight's World in a Minute. The Baltimore Sun reports that federal agents stopped two Japanese cult members from releasing nerve gas at Disneyland last weekend. The Sun says agents arrested two men at L.A.'s airport. They have ties to the group suspected of a nerve gas attack in Tokyo last month. Bosnian Serbs force U.S. and German diplomats to abandon travel from Sarajevo's airport into the city today. The action is a humiliating setback for the U.N. mission and Bosnian peace efforts. Germany approved the extradition of a Bosnian Serb to the United Nations War Crimes Tribunal. Dusan Tadic is accused of murder during ethnic cleansing operations. In Moscow, thousands are celebrating the 125th anniversary of Lenin's birth. Many people laid wreaths at memorials honoring the founder of the former Soviet state. And two British parachutists are getting a top view of the North Pole. The men braved windshields of 100 degrees below freezing to land on the top of the world. The people across the globe are celebrating Earth Day today. In Denver, the spirit of recycling was alive and well as people picked up free mulch made from Christmas trees. And Earth Day celebrations continue tomorrow at Larimer Square, where you can pick up some Earth-friendly ideas. Mother Nature isn't being very friendly this weekend. Get ready for more flurries. Cliff will tell you when in his forecast, so stick around. Cliff Morrison joins us, and please tell me it's going to get nice again okay, one of these days. Uh, I'd say Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, we should have an improvement. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Uh, hope springs eternal. <laughs> Here's the way the snow looked this afternoon. we got to tell you, Arapahoe Basin, Breckenridge Keystone Resort, all bragging that everything's just swell up there. Nearly three feet of new snow during the past week. Uh, they had the, the eight and it up at the Basin Figure 8 competition was held today at uh, Arapahoe Basin. They did real fine there. I also have to tell you, if you're thinking about heading in that direction, wait until after the newscast. But even if you do go, I-70 is closed in both directions of Vail Pass due to icy conditions. It's tough up there. We have 34 degrees now? Yeah, 34 here in the Denver area. And the winds are from the south at 7. The relative humidity at 85%. The storm goes away on Monday. We have a high of 51 in the afternoon, 57 on Tuesday, 58 on Wednesday. And we warm up to 60 degrees 
on Thursday. Good. That's the best I can do for you. Just in time for May to get here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're and Kurt joins us with a uh, look at what's coming up. Fun night in sports tonight, Lynn. Coming up, the Nuggets game wasn't supposed to matter with Golden State tonight, but it did. We will explain. And Heisman Trophy winner Rashawn Salam was one of seven Colorado Buffaloes selected in today's NFL draft. We'll have the complete report next in sports. Well, some Colorado football players are seeing big dollar signs. Yes, yeah. they are, and with good reason. I think, if anything, too, this helped the Buffs recruiting as to what type of programs up there. But the tradition continues. In the past five years, Colorado has seen six of its players selected in the first round. The Colorado connection started very early in today's NFL draft. And George Foreman is still the heavyweight champion of the world. Didn't look like he won today, but the judges said yes, he did in a split decision. <laughs> and the judges know. <laughs> the judges know. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Well, don't go away. Up next, we'll show you a bouncing baby boy. A big, very big baby boy. We'll be right back. Finally tonight, a family in Oregon is celebrating a big new addition to the family. Sandra Williams knew from the ultrasound that this was no lightweight she was about to give birth to, but even she was surprised when Jesse Robert Williams weighed in at 14 pounds. His mom says she didn't believe the scales until she held her big bouncing boy for the first time. And that's the news on this Saturday night. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.